this is the new Land Rover Defender. Now, I've driven this car a little bit before, quite a lot before, off-road, and it is incredibly capable. But two things are outstanding that I would still like to know. One, what's it like on the road? Well, I'm on the road in the UK now, and I can say it's really incredibly refined. If you're used to the way the old Defender was, this is night and day different. More relevant is what it's like against other modern off-roaders, and it's very quiet even compared to those. It rides, drives, handles, if anything, like a sort of Land Rover Discovery. It's really refined, even, even though it has a, an interior that is meant to look, you know, rugged and basic. This is an extremely relaxing road car. I think if you were to think of it as a replacement for anything, rather than thinking of it as a replacement for the old Defender, it kind of gives Land Rover Discovery 4 owners, Disco 3 and 4, the car that you know, it's really, really refined on the road. It gives them somewhere to go. This is the car that does everything on road and off. That brings me to part two of what I'd like to know about the Defender. I know on its own, it's an incredibly capable vehicle, but what I'd be intrigued to find out is in the same conditions, in the same place, is it better or worse than two of the world's other most able off-roaders? Well, I've got a Jeep Wrangler and a Mercedes G-Class and a disused quarry, which is the perfect place to find out. Okay, so welcome to our very dry, very dusty, quite steep quarry and the world's three most capable off-roaders out of the box, perhaps. Now, the interesting thing is, is these are all on different tyres. The Wrangler has arrived on tyres which are as hardcore as you can get. The Land Rover and the Mercedes are not quite to the same spec, but what we'll do is we'll try and make these tests as objective as possible. We'll have a few of those, but before that, let's run through the detailed specifications of all three off-roaders. There are a number of things that dictate whether a car will get somewhere off-road or not. Tyres is the big one, but also vehicle weight, ground clearance, things like that. But there are some numbers that I can give you that gives you an indication, a basic indication of what each car will do. So let's start with the Defender. It has what they call an approach angle, which is the angle of approach up to a slope, and it will nose into it if that angle is any more than 38 degrees. That's pretty good, 38 degrees. Then there is the break over angle, which in this long wheelbase Defender, a short one is coming, is 28 degrees. And that's basically the ramp angle, they call it. And then finally, there is what they call a departure angle, which is whether a car will scuff as you go down a slope and come back onto level ground. The, the Land Rover is really impressive. Actually, it's a 40 degree uh, departure angle, which is impressive. There will be a longer 130 wheelbase, uh, 130 length Land Rover later, which has a longer rear overhang in which that will be less. Now there's also a weighed depth. This car is on air spring, so it's worth remembering that when steel sprung defenders arrive later, these angles will change. And unless the car is fixed at this height, probably won't be as good. But the weight depth is 900 millimeters, which is particularly impressive. And then the ground clearance with this car lifted as high as it'll go is 291 millimeters. So just nine mil short of a foot. Now it's worth remembering that that is taken from the body. And usually a differential on a solid axle car will hang much lower than that. And even on this car, which has got independent front and rear suspension, that will hang lower than that at the body edges. And depending on what sort of terrain you're on, that may make a difference to the capability. But anyway, that's the Land Rover. Let's move on to the Jeep. Right, so to the Wrangler. Uh, we've been to this quarry before, in a Wrangler before, and it has been the best off-roader we've tried here by quite some distance. But if you look at the raw stats, they don't necessarily look as good as those on the new Defender. But it's worth remembering, this car runs a solid front and rear axles, has a separate chassis still, and also has a fixed vehicle height. So the numbers I'm about to give you, it will do all the time, whereas the Defender you have to actually raise on its hair springs to get them. The approach angle is 36 degrees, the breakover or ramp angle is 20.8 degrees. In a short two-door Jeep, obviously that would be slightly better, and out the back, the departure angle is 31.4 degrees. The Wrangler looks like it sits slightly lower than the Defender to the ground, and so it proves the Rubicon has a 252 millimeter ground clearance. I've seen more quoted elsewhere, like 270 odd mil, but 252 is Jeep's official number. And that gives it a 762 millimeter weight depth. All of those are impressive on their own. And remember, this will do that all the time. And if you buy one of these in the States, you can get so many hot parts from the factory that these cars stay stock for about five minutes. But let's have a look at the Mercedes and then we'll go and see what these numbers mean in the real world. 
and so to the Mercedes G-Class, which starts at the front with a 31 degree approach angle. Between the axles, the angle is 26 degrees on the breakover, and then at the back, the departure angle is 30 degrees. Now, like the Jeep, that is fixed because this car runs coil springs, so it is the same height at all time, and ground clearance between the axles is similar to the Jeep's. 240 millimeters. This will weigh on paper a little bit less at 700 mil, although to be honest, whether you're running 700 or 760, I'm not sure I'd want to take the chance if, the, if it was that perilous between the two. But let's go for a drive, see what all of these numbers mean in the real world, and also consider what difference their four wheel drive systems, their traction control systems, their differentials, what difference that makes to how easily they go around our off road course. So first, let's take a general drive around our off-road course and get a feel for what's good and what's bad about each of these off-roaders. And while we're doing that, if you would like to click subscribe or like the video, we'd be incredibly grateful. It's going to be difficult to find somewhere where one car will go and another car will not. That is the, you know, it would be nice from a narrative perspective is if we started with all three cars, one car wouldn't go up a hill somewhere and the other two wouldn't. You carry on until the other one won't do something. That would be ideal. But in this place with these three cars, if that happens, it's going to be down to the tyres on this, which is not entirely fair. So I'm going to start with this car and go for a general mooch around and just come to some conclusions about how easy it is and how helpful this car is to getting around. Now, what I really like about the Wrangler is the fact that we took the roof off, hence this silly hat, sorry, uh, this morning. It took about five minutes for two people. Hey, just leave it to one side and also the doors come off i haven't taken the doors off because we thought we might end up with water splashing inside the cabin which i don't really want but the doors come off too and it shouldn't be underestimated how useful that sort of thing is i mean a it makes going off-road in nice weather lots of fun because you're at one with the surroundings but also it makes visibility much easier when there's nothing there you can look out and see a rock that's that side or see an edge that's that side it, it makes life very very easy this car is in rubicon specification now like the land rover particularly depending on which spec you go for you get a slightly different set of off-road credentials so in jeep spec there are two and this one is the rock track which is gives you more hardcore differentials which we'll come to in a moment and also a lower low ratio gearbox i don't need to be in low ratio at the moment but when i am this will give it a an even lower than the normal one low ratio it just feels, this is going to sound a silly thing to say, possibly, it feels like it was made for this sort of thing. It was made for this sort of thing. This kind of thing is exactly what the Jeep was made for. It's easy to place the edges. I can see all of the bonnet. I get a really good feel for what the car is doing and where it is. And that stuff is important because trust in the vehicle that it will go somewhere and if you, you know, and you, you can place it exactly is a really big point of going on rough terrain I think so let's swap out into one of the other two and see if they feel as at home on this kind of ground as the Jeep does and so I've stepped from the Wrangler into the Defender to see how that gets on around this course first first impressions this is a much bigger car I mean it, it is dimensionally much bigger it's it's taller especially once you raise the suspension but it's it's taller anyway there's a lot more there's a lot more headroom in here. It's a wider cabin, it's a wider car. Now, the nice thing about the old Land Rover Defender is it was very compact and very narrow, too narrow to meet modern crash regulations, one suspects, but this is now a really big car. Across the body, it's like two meters uh, and a bit wide, whereas a Wrangler across the body is like 18 something, 1860, 1870. So this is a, a wider car. That sort of stuff does matter, not on the road in the Middle East or the US or something like that, that matters off-road particularly in the UK when you're going through narrow farm gates or when you're going through uh, woodland tracks and things like that. On the plus side, a oh, very slabby size, big mirrors. I can see each corner of the bonnet, so it does help place the car. The steering is lighter, so that it's, it takes less heaving when the, when the wheels are loaded via, you know, if you, if you come up against a corner or something, the wheels get loaded up. The steering is still very light. The throttle is really, really long so there are, there are benefits to the way it's set up. What you don't have is such a connection to the outside. But this is the car, and we found this on the original drive, that makes going off-road, that makes going onto rough terrain as easy as it can. It tries to trouble you as little as, you, as, it, as it possibly can. 
whereas Wrangler kind of involves you in the process. I think that's part of the fun. In a way, it feels like the Land Rover doesn't, doesn't want you to get too involved. It's sort of like, look, step back, lads. I've got this. So there's an off-road monitor screen in here. There are different, and there will be increasingly different, suspension or underbody options in terms of air springs, coil springs. And in fact, you can get different differential systems because there is a center differential, which this has, and it is automatically opening and closing, but then there is also a rear differential, which can lock as well. Both the center and the rear can lock. Whether they do it automatically, whether you can select it to do it, is something that comes as you move up through the range. What the Wrangler doesn't get, and what the Land Rover does, is what Land Rover calls terrain response control. So I push a button on here, that brings up a load of options on the dash in front of me whether that is grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, wading, or you can configure your own or just leave it in auto, which is what I'm going to do today. What that does is that tends to adjust the stability control programs, the ESC program, also the length of the throttle pedal, if you like. So if you're on sand and you need lots of power, it makes the throttle very responsive. If you're on rock crawl, which means you need tiny bits of power eked out very gently, it makes the throttle less responsive, if you like, so you, you can push it a lot before you get a huge amount back. As with the Wrangler, there's a low ratio transfer case, which means you can select a lower set of gear ratios for rock crawling or just crawling off-road or towing off-road. Now, I would expect that because you can lift the Defender so much in its air sprung mode, that actually it will go over crests and have more body clearance than the Wrangler will when it comes to beaching on some obstacles. I think what we're going to do is do the same route now in the G-Class, see how that goes, and then actually climb outside, get a spotter, and do a really, really taxing test that might make the difference between one of these cars getting somewhere and the other one not. And so to the G-Class, which is new but familiar in the fact that uh, it was given, you know, it was, it was completely replaced, but the doors still do that, still clack like they used to. Um, you know, it's still a tall, narrow, relative, uh, relatively narrow vehicle. And there are, you know, although it was completely overhauled, it feels familiar. It's got the big upright windscreen. Uh, it's got a very, you know, compact feeling dimensions. And you can see the little indicators atop the wings. That actually makes it very easy to place off-road. Again, like the Wrangler in a way, it's quite a straightforward feeling. If you clean away, it's kind of halfway between Defender and Wrangler in that it does have a live rear axle. It does have independent front suspension. I've got permanent four-wheel drive, low ratio, yada, 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 and very straightforward controls for the differentials, which I'll come on to in a moment. And as well as both the Wrangler and G-Class feeling slightly narrower of body than the Defender, it's also worth noting that they have little plastic extensions on the wings. The Wrangler's even bigger than the G-Classes. Now, this makes a difference because if you do happen to nerf the edge of the body on a rock or a, or a tree off-road, it does less damage to the metalwork because there is sacrificial plastic over the top. Doesn't have the full gamut of terrain response in the same way that the Defender does. It just has slightly more, uh, slightly more straightforward controls on that. It's dynamic select system, which you control through the sort of old-fashioned Mercedes spinny wheel thing, is more about sort of on-road engine and gearbox than it is strictly in off-road mode. All these cars take a little bit of turning. In terms of turning circles, something like a Suzuki Jimny would be more manoeuvrable. So, what we may have is a bit where one car or two cars will go and another one will not. So let's get them all together. I'll get a spotter and I'll get Ollie on the camera to look at it front and back and we'll see exactly what's going on underneath these cars and we'll try and make a judgment on whether one or the other really is more capable once you actually get loading a huge amount either way. Right, so uh, sort of final challenge. It's not going to tell us absolutely consistently everywhere you go this car will be better than that car which is better than that car that's not how my understanding that's not how 4x4s work you know some will be better in some places than others but 
I've got all three differentials locked. I'm going to test an axle articulation thing by seeing how far a wheel gets off the ground and how the car copes with it when a wheel is off the ground. Then also there's some moguls which will tell me whether it's grounding out or not. We don't have anywhere deep enough to say which is going to weigh the deepest, but you know the Land Rover's numbers suggest that it will. And if you do durability tests and smack things on the ground repeatedly, well, we're not going to do that either because we've got to drive home. Right, so I've got a crest here, and if I get my wheels bang on, so my front, right and rear left are on the crest, this will show how good the axle articulation is. Lawrence is outside, judging... How just far? Off just off the ground now. Two to three feet off, and that's at the tipping point. So there's quite a lot of... Thank you. So there's quite a lot of movement. But what the diff does, because they're all locked, it has no trouble just portioning power to wherever it is. So there's no dick, 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 no graunching, no hesitation. You can stop, you can lift off, and as soon as you do either, it carries on. Right, so up ahead I have my trusty Sherpa, who in 30 plus degrees is wearing Wellingtons and jeans. It's hardcore. Anyway, he's a bit of an expert, so I'm letting him do the direction. Straight-ish, straight-ish, he says. And I want to see if any of the wheels come off the ground and also whether we run out of ground clearance either under the car, between the wheelbase, under the rear axle, wherever we, wherever we may run out of travel. Have I got any wheels off the ground, Storm? Are any wheels off the ground? Yeah, you put, put the about a foot off, and then there you go. And there we go. But that'll inevitably... Do that every time. Yeah. So it's been doing that every time I come up there. It's just, it just slightly runs out of uh, breakover between the axles. It's got skid, skid plates underneath, so no harm is being done. No vehicles were harmed in the making of this video. But anyway, that's quite interesting. The wheels do come off the ground. The diffs have absolutely no bother with it when they do. So let's go jump into the Defender, I think, and see how that gets on over exactly the same piece of terrain. Right, so to the Defender on the same piece of terrain. Let me knock that across into uh, holding a gear. So let me hold second in low ratio. Now this is, I put it into rock crawl mode, so it'll lock that centre differential. And then we'll see how, if I line it up so that the wheels come up. Now already, I can, you can you, can you hear it? Tick, 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 tick. As what it's doing is it's is it's breaking stuff to a portion power on the other side. More or less off the ground, do you reckon? Just, just off. Yeah, you're off now. Okay. Tick, 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 tick. It's not going over as easily as the G because the axles, the differentials are not locked in the same way. Would you reckon that's more off or less off the ground? More, more, more wheel off the ground. More wheel off the ground. Well, that's interesting. So that's possibly the articulation. It could be the fact that it's just a higher car, but it could be also that the articulation is not as, as vast as the G. And there we go again, it's ticking away as it's, it's pulling through. It's not, it's not holding up, but it's not pulling with the same ease as the Mercedes. Right, so, okay, so through two Sherpa moguls, number two, it does feel wider, it certainly feels wider through here. I'm getting a thumbs up earlier than I got a thumbs up last time, I think. Tick, 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 tick. I think I can feel wheels. <laughs> Have I got wheels further off the ground now than last time, do you reckon? Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah, about probably three or four inches further off. Okay, three or four inches more three or four inches more off the ground. And when I do, in fact, if I hold the brakes, it's almost like I'm doing that. I am about to, I think, yeah. A little bit right and down, he says. Oh, I think there's less grounding than in the G.
Do you reckon there was less grounding than in the Mercedes? Uh, marginal, but yeah. Yeah. It's wider, isn't it? So you. It's wider it's and it's and it's taller, so it's got more ground clearance anyway. More, yeah. there's more breakover. So, I mean, not the, the, about where you are, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why not? Isn't it? Yeah. So the numbers say uh, exactly what it is doing. It's a wider car, so you have to be a little bit more particular about your line. But actually, that breakover angle is bigger because the car is taller with 291 mil ground clearance, and so it proves. Low ratio is really low in this. Let's get that. That's manual too. It's so low. Am I going more or less off, do you reckon? I think that was between like higher than the G but lower than the Defender. Okay, thank you. So there you go, higher than one, lower than the other. It felt less dramatic from inside, I'll give it that. But possibly that's because there's less weight shifting and I don't sit as high, less weight shifting from one side to the other. There's another consideration, isn't it, really, is the confidence that a car gives you. Right, so to part two with my Sherpa. And this is the bit I'm worried about because I have a feeling that before, when I tried this, it runs out of clearance somewhere up here. And the other two do meet in the middle, but they've got enough traction still to get it past it. So already, and I certainly wasn't hitting anything there, I've hit something underneath with this. And I think it's in the middle of the car. Is that in the middle of the car? I'm not even, I'm not anywhere near as far up. Big skid plates underneath, it's built for this sort of thing. Lifts itself off, no problem. But the other two did not do that. Diffs are having absolutely no problem as I come on and off the throttle. Pretty close. Have I got any wheels off? Thanks. And that is it. Were the wheels further or less off than before, do you reckon? Uh, a bit less than the Land Rover. Okay. Um, the diff was pretty close. I might have ground out a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the sills hit the floor, but... Okay, okay. Even, even when it was grounding out back there, it looked like the wheels were on the ground. Oh, that's interesting. pretty close. Yeah. And so in the others, you think one was off the... Yeah. But hmm. it was, I mean, that, that listed a lot less when it, as it came across. Yeah. It seemed to be under better control than Land Rover was yeah. at times. It feels it feels lower and more controlled in it in its in its way, Although but it feels more likely to ground. Yeah, it's much yeah. longer in contact yeah. with the ground, I would say. Yeah. So there you have it. A slightly non-conclusive test. These are all incredibly able in all incredibly slightly different ways. But the difference is, whereas before we've done this test and the Wrangler was the class of the field bar none, today it has at last met its match. Mm -hmm.